Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Galen Snyder Show. I'm Vince Reed. And, of course, we're brought to you by Aria Health, your neighbors and friends here in Lower Bucks County. We're ready to take care of you when you need assistance from them. Well, the Pensbury Falcons coming into a home game here, which is only going to be, as we mentioned before, you only have four of them this year, but this will be a unique one as uh, here it is on a Thursday night for them to come in and play this ball game, and thus a short week for the Pensbury Ball Club coming off that Abington win, and they'll be taking on the Owls of Ben Salem at home for this contest. The Owls having a rough time of it so far. They've been shut out three times. They haven't won a ball game yet. They really haven't done much moving the ball offensively or defensively. In one ball game, they managed to get 13 points. Another ball game, they managed to get 20. So they had 33 for the entire season. At the same time, they've been giving up in the high 40s and 50s so far this year, and that's been a little problem for the Owls. But uh, before we get to that, we'll talk a little bit about that Abington ball game. And uh, Coach got a chance to, to check in with that first half, had a chance to, to watch that as well as listen to it. And uh, he got behind there early on. Uh, Abington went up, and I, I was thinking to myself, oh, geez, it's always tough over there. A lot of times it's a tough ball game. But uh, apparently uh, your guys came back with a vengeance. Yeah, we, uh, we went down there, and, uh, you know, to their credit, they came out, had a really good first drive um, against us. And, did a good job mixing it up, keeping us a little bit off balance. Um, so uh, we had to adjust a little bit some of the things we did, and uh, we ended up doing that and playing a lot better defense from that standpoint uh, from there on out. And offensively, you know, uh, we came out, we didn't really click right away, but again, we stuck with it. And, uh, you know, we were up by 14-7 uh, going right. into the half, and then, you know, we talked to them at halftime about the fact that, you know, we had to you know, continue doing what we're doing and, uh, you know, Step it up a notch, and, uh, and fortunately, we came out in the second half and did a real nice job on both sides of the ball. You didn't want to be, but of course, I think you've got to be happy about the fact that you know you had a team there that I, that I felt had to come through with a win against you in the Galloping Ghost in that ball game, and then getting behind early. I think maybe you got a chance to find out, you know, what the kids are really made of. Get you know, get that chance to say, hey, guess what? We got to come back this time. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, uh, you know, you can look at it that way, no doubt. Um, I, I think that, you know, I, it was one of those things where, and you're right, you're right, you know, they had lost the game in the Chamonix, they could have won either way, that I think they they felt like they, you know, uh, uh, they probably regretted. Yeah. And so they, they, they looked at us on the schedule, looked at the rest of the teams coming right. up, and they knew that it was a big game, so they gave us their, their best effort. And, and um, you know, with our guys, I, I did feel, though, I felt like, you know, I never felt, in talking to the coaches, really, we never really felt like, you know, we were in serious trouble there. We felt like, you know, we just had to straighten a couple things out. Right. We would, we would start playing better. Well, certainly it did from their point on. That point on, of course, you reeled off 34 for the rest of the ball game, and a lot of those coming in that second half when you're able to pull away in that game. And you've got to be happy about the way, uh, you know, the team has responded as far as that goes. When it comes to the team, whether whether it's close early on or they get the lead early on, is one thing is that, that I've noticed is the fact that they, they come on as the game goes on and they have those big second halves. And I, I think that's that's a key for any ball game because I think if you're going to have any problems or a team is going to say, well, you know, we're in the ball game with them, it's going to be in the first half. If you can click in the second half the way you've been doing, and it seems like that you've upped your game in that third quarter where some of these ball games you're able to play the subs in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, other than the Rock South game where we came out in the second half and that was the first game of the season and um, we had done so well in the first half that I think like we let up a little bit and we ended up turning the ball over and getting ourselves in trouble. But other than that game, uh, I, yeah, I feel like we've uh, come out with strong second halves and, um, you know, really taking the game over in the third quarter. All right, we're going to talk more about the upcoming ball game, of course, with the Pensbury Ball Club being at home against the Ben Salem Owls in just a moment. Achieving what you want demands the right game plan. When you team up with PNC, you get the tools and know-how you need to get where you want to go. Whether it's buying a new home, sending your kids off to college, or retiring the way you want, PNC is here ready to help you achieve your financial goals. To discover all the ways PNC can help, stop by any branch or visit PNC.com. PNC for the achiever in you. PNC Bank, member FDIC. 
Princeton University football, affordable family fun for everyone at one of the nation's finest on-campus football stadiums. Get your 2014 tickets now as the Tigers defend their Ivy League championship. The Tigers set Ivy League records in both scoring offense and total defense in 2013, and nine all-Ivy selections returned this season, including Quinn Epperly, the reigning Offensive Player of the Year, and named to this year's Walter Payton Award watch list, along with all-Ivy defensive standout Anthony Gaffney. Tickets are on sale now for all five home games starting Saturday, September 27th, under the lights against Davidson. Ivy League foes Brown, Dartmouth, Penn, and Harvard visit Tiger Stadium in 2014. All single game tickets, just $10, and season tickets for all five home games, only $30. Group and youth tickets also available. For more ticket information, visit GoPrincetonTigers.com. That's GoPrincetonTigers.com. Princeton University football, affordable family fun for everyone. Hi, Merle Reese to tell you about our good friends at the Revere Ristorante Italiano in nearby Ewing Township at 802 River Road. I can tell you that from South Philadelphia to New York's Mulberry Street, there's no better Italian cuisine than that served at the Revere. Start your meal with one of their great appetizers or salads. Entrees include outstanding veal dishes, fresh seafood daily, excellent steaks and chops, homemade pasta dishes, daily specials, and much more. You can also enjoy their bar area, where on most weekends, entertainment is offered. The Revere also does off-premise catering and can accommodate private parties for any affair, including business functions. Call the Revere Ristorante Italiano for more information and reservations at 609-882-6365. 882-6365. The Revere Ristorante Italiano open Monday through Friday for lunch and seven days for dinner at 802 River Road, right off the Wilbertha Road exit on Route 29 in nearby Ewing Township. Oh, the corner kicks right to Chris. He's got a shot. Oh, no. It happens fast, so we'll treat you fast. Introducing Rothman Orthopedic Urgent Care, where you're seen without an appointment by a Rothman Orthopedic Specialist. Fast, any day of the week. Okay. Easy with his leg. Rothman Orthopedic Urgent Care, now in Marlton, New Jersey, with more locations to come. It happens fast. We'll treat you fast. Rothman Orthopedic Urgent Care. See RothmanInstitute.com. Back right, once more here with the Gail and Snyder Show. Of course, being brought to you by Aria Health, your neighbors and friends here in Lower Bucks County. And when we look at the, the Ben Salem game coming up, Coach, uh, it's one of the things I, I mentioned about a lot of times is that you come into a ball game, you know you've been doing well, and you've got a short week, and now you come up a ball club that's having all kinds of problems. It's probably one of those cases where, you know, Maybe to, to get started, that you might have one of those games where, you know, it's kind of slow to get started because you realize, you know, this team we should be able to handle. Well, it's interesting you brought that up because last year against Ben Salem, um, the teams were in similar positions, and we came out and uh, I think we were, we were trying to rest Charles Norway in the beginning, and, um, you know, we didn't play good defense, particularly against the run at the start. Um, we didn't. You know, we didn't do a nice job running the ball, and they actually uh, jumped out on top of us right. there, and we were struggling. Then we put Charlie back in the game, and the guys all, you know, cranked it up, and we, we played much better after that. But it was a real clean game against Ben Salem last yeah. year in similar circumstances, and I did remind the kids about that during uh, this week in practice. You know, when you, when you look at it, and of course you have a chance to look at all the teams, and you look at uh, Ben Salem, what do you think, as far as you can see as a coach, where, where are their, their main problems? What, what are the biggest things they're having trouble with? Well, I, I think that, you know, I think in a number of things from what I see, it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably lack of experience is a big factor. Um, just watching them, I saw them live a couple times, uh, so they lack some experience. Um, they have some size and some speed, but I think they lack depth. Um, that hurts them in the numbers. Yeah. And, so, Lack of experience, lack of depth, and uh, and then um, you know maybe maybe they have uh, who knows maybe they, you know when you when you lose games like the way they do you, you know you definitely get like a, a lack of confidence at some point. So um, those are all the things, all the challenges I see that you know of course that you know, their coaches have to are, are, are trying to handle the best they can. Yeah, I was going to say you know if if you were in that predicament, you know what do you do from week to week and. And how do you try to get around that or try to get 
into the kids' heads that, hey, you know, let's come up, we can play better than this? Well, I, I would think that he would just focus on the quarter of the quarter. You know, you go out and you say, hey, let's play a good first quarter here right. against Pennsbury, and, and then see, you know, same thing, focus on the next quarter, and then go in the half and communicate. I think you break it down small like that, trying to win individual battles, play to play, get focused, um, try to establish certain consistencies um, from week to week. You know, run the ball well, or in our case, thing, that would be one yeah. of the things we would yeah. try to establish. But it's not an easy position to be in, and yeah. uh, you know, to, to be successful in football, you need a lot of good football players. Not just some. Yeah. You need a lot of good football players. I think your idea is, is very good because one of the things I think you want to get into their heads is get out there and, and you know, let's play the best quarter we've ever played, and for this season, let's play for 12 minutes. Think of it as a 12-minute game, and let's play that to our hearts' content and see what we see what happens. Because if they start thinking, oh, geez, we got Pensbury and we got, you know, all these other teams that we have to go four quarters. You know, I think that's a, a good idea is to, to let them think that, you know, hey, maybe you can play your best quarter right now. Right. And, and you never know. Things break in football games, turnovers, unexpected things. So, you know, um, that, that would be the approach I would take. Of course, um, you know, from our standpoint, it's, it's, it's about trying to continually get better. Yeah, and without regard to who we're playing, we're trying to get better each week and make ourselves better. And uh, we have so many goals, including you know trying to win the league, trying to remain right. unbeaten in the league before moving on to the playoffs. So for us, it's just to continue to work to get better. And the the other side of the coin, coach. This is something that I've noticed. Uh, I don't care if it's if it's high school, if it's college. Uh, or what sport you might be playing, you're in a situation where you've got a team that you know should, you should go up against and we know you should defeat. The thing that bothers me about that, when you've got a game that, that maybe you, you take care of and, and you do it too easily, I always worry about the next game. That's what bothers me is a lot of times when you play a team that, you know, is just having all kinds of problems, haven't done anything, but the next ball club is... I see a lot of ball clubs that after you have that game against a, a team that just can't get it together and, and they look weak, but at the same time, the very next week, you've got to come up. I see a lot of come, teams not only come up short the next game, but certainly get up to a slow start. That's the thing that worries me about playing a game such as this. Um, yeah, I, I've seen that too. I know, I know you're, you're referring to, uh, and that, that can be an issue. I mean, from our standpoint, you know, I, I think that you know, we, I mean, we're just kind of like taking it week to week, enjoying playing the games. I know we're going we're to play on Thursday night. I'm going to give the guys a little time off Friday right. through Sunday and bring them back the next week and get focused on, on our homecoming game with Penridge. So, yeah. um, you know, hey, you get a certain amount of, you get 10 guaranteed games for all the work you put in the offseason. This is one of the guaranteed games. And then hopefully put your position yourself in a position to play some games after that. And uh, so far we've been doing it. But um, you know, shame on you if you don't if you don't embrace every opportunity right. you get, every game you get. Yeah, that, that's what bothers me is a case of where a lot of times you, you go in there and you've kind of had it easy a little bit. Maybe a, a, a take the next game. You can't take the next game lightly. That's the biggest thing. All right, so we're going to be back to talk about this Pensbury team and how they've been faring this year. And of course, they're undefeated here both in the league and overall as we get set to go into this, the sixth game of the season. We'll be back for that right after this. Experience the Volkswagen love by visiting Volkswagen of Langhorne, located at 1862 East Lincoln Highway, minutes away from Interstate 95. Family owned and operated for over 20 years, Volkswagen of Langhorne is located in the heart of Bucks County. As the leader in customer satisfaction in both sales and service departments, they provide the finest automotive experience to you, our neighbors. Visit Volkswagen of Langhorne today to see and drive the latest selection of new and certified pre-owned Volkswagens. Be sure to also take a test drive in some of the newest models available, such as the all-new GTI. Start experiencing Volkswagen of Langhorne today online at vwoflanghorn.com. That's vwoflanghorn.com. 
The Aria 3B Orthopedic Institute is redefining care in Center City and South Jersey. And our 50,000 square foot location on Aria Health's Bucks Campus in Langhorne features private rooms, free parking, and nearby hotels. With over a century of experience, the world-class 3Bs, Drs. Booth, Bartolozzi, Balderston, and their partners personally guide you from treatment through recovery. For all your orthopedic needs, call 1-888-ORTHO-3B or visit ARIA3BOrtho.org. At the Aria 3B Orthopedic Institute, you come first. If you are looking for a car, where do you go? Falconer Auto Group at 4427 Street Road in Trevos is where to go. For the best deals in Bucks County for all your new pre-owned cars, trucks, or SUVs, go to Falconer Auto Group. It's always Falconer to be sure. Go online to falconerautogroup.com. Just remember, it's Faulkner to be sure for all your new cars or trucks. 4427 Street Road in Trevos. Faulkner to be sure. Hi, this is Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick, and I hope you're enjoying tonight's game. As we gear up for another campaign here in the 8th Congressional District, there are some things that always remain the same, and that's remembering where you came from. I'm proud to say that I was born and raised here in Lower Bucks and attended local schools. That's why I will never forget our community's needs and will continue to fight for programs like help for flood victims along the Neshaminy Creek, preserving historic land and open space, and bringing the National Veterans Cemetery to Bucks County. As your congressman for the 8th Congressional District, I can promise you one thing, that I will never forget my roots. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy tonight's game. Paid for by Fitzpatrick for Congress. And of course, we're back again with the Gail and Snyder Show. I'm Vince Reed, brought to you by RIA Health, your friends and neighbors here in Bucks County who take care of you when you really need them. And as far as it goes, coming up to this game, Coach, you, your team has looked really good. We were talking uh, before we even started the show, and I was looking down on the stats that you had here for me. And it's nice to see that uh, you've got such an array with these backs, as I said, the guys who start in Snorway, Delgado, and Thompson, it's good to look down and see where they're, they're all averaging nine points something per, per carry. That's, that's amazing for three guys. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And uh, it's a tribute to not only their talent, but also the talent of the guys uh, blocking right. for them. And, and quite frankly, also the quarterback, um, you know, uh, keeping people from uh, being able to crowd the line as much as right. they would like to. You know, you look at, the, you look at that, and of course, Chuck Snorway last year had 22 uh, TDs on the, on the ground, had, uh, had a couple of more in the air. He's got 14 so far halfway through the season. And uh, you've got guys like uh, Delgado's got five and Thompson's got three. And, of course, when you, you look at that, Alley has one so far. But when you look at those and you see that everybody's getting handed it, you can tell that, you know, it's, it's really tough when the, the line is looking across and the defense is looking across at you that they don't know which way to turn sometimes because of the fact that you've got so many guys who can really tote the ball and they got those guys in front of it over those lines. Yeah, and that definitely helps us, uh, you know, we, breaking, you know, they get a little focused on Charlie and all of a sudden there's a counter coming back with uh, Thompson or Delgado and I, I think they actually both hit touchdowns last game on, on counter plays. Right. So, um, you know, that that's definitely a little bit different than if you can just zone in on one back. I know it's, it's got to be good for you uh, looking to not only here, but uh, if you need somebody. Uh, you look at all the guys who carry the ball for you and also have scored some, uh, some touchdowns who have gotten their chances to be in that backfield, and which is not only good for you this season in case you need somebody, but certainly it bodes well for them getting the feel for the game heading into next year. Sure, and we've uh, even been putting uh, Rupert, who's playing offensive yeah. guard, and at the end of the game he's playing fullback, getting a little bit of run time there. He's a converted fullback. So, no, it gives us an opportunity to see some of the other guys uh, run the ball and, you know, like I said, we're going to just kind of try to keep it up, keep keep working, keep uh, you're trying to get ahead in these games and get the opportunity for other guys to get in. And when you look at it, Mike Alley, I think, really has come along well, which we, I think, expected. He's a, he's a sharp kid. He's a smart kid, of course, taking over and then getting his chance in that second game of the season. But certainly he has, he has really run the team very well. I noticed that, you know, He's improving each and every week as far as it goes with handling the offense, the footwork, uh, the handoffs. And right now, here it is midseason. He's got himself four TD passes, and you don't throw that much. But for him to get four of those is a good indication. He's doing a nice job there as well. Yeah, definitely. Probably should have had a couple more that, you know, we, yeah. we uh, were right there. And, you know, one thing or another.
another happen. So he's going to get a few more before we're done here. All right, how about the defensive side of the ball? Uh, I look at it here, and, and the guys who, who you know you expect they're going to be there is, is some of your linebackers. And, and I was talking to some people this week, and they were saying to me, well, what do you think, you know, what do you think of that defense that came back from last year? What do you think you're really strong? I really, even at the uh, coaches' roundtable uh, on Wednesday nights over at Sandy's, I, I mentioned to him about the fact that if, uh, I think your, your four linebackers are just, just fantastic. I think you've got four that really could play for anybody. Well, our, our linebacking situation is strong. I mean, we're getting uh, uh, Dalton Hose back really comfortable playing full-time. In, in the first couple games, he and Victor Delgado kind of splitting time in the backfield right. and also playing some D. Now Victor's settling in. Of course, he's a very good defensive player, outside linebacker, but he's settling in on offense. And now we're really settling Dalton in on the defensive yeah. side. And Dalton's a very good you know, defensive player. Um, so I, I think that from that standpoint, I can see our defense is even going to continue to improve. Yeah, now, you can't take away from the line. I'm not taking away from the line at all because I think when you look at some of the ball games, they, they've certainly done their share as far as that goes, and they're mentioned quite a bit during our games. But I think really when you come down to it, uh, your front line and, and your linebackers, uh, you know, make it tough to where other teams more or less every now and then, they, maybe even more than they'd like to, have to put the ball up. And, and that's where you've done well. You've got a, a total of uh, eight, uh, nine breakups in the uh, – in the passing situation, six interceptions for the season so far in five games. That's 15 times that these guys have been able to do a job for you. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, we have some experience back in the secondary. You got three starters back, um, you know, well, the two corners and the free safety. Um, and then on the D-line, you mentioned the D-line. Uh, we did. The D-line, we have, we have two starters back out of the four. Right. But the guys who we've We've put in, have done a real nice job, and, and we've actually, you know, had through injuries and such, we've played a played. We probably played about seven different guys on the D line out of, out of the four positions, yeah. and, and continually play that. So we try to keep them fresh that way. And again, we have some depth, and, and, and if you're going to do well, you have to have a little bit of depth, and you have to have a lot of good players. Yeah, you certainly do, and of course. The, we seem to have it as far as that goes. Your ball club on both sides of the ball. I want to give an indication of what some of these guys are doing. Luke, of course, uh, your son there has 40 uh, uh, tackles total. He's got 17 solo. And then you, you look at the, right up after him, Jordan O'Neill's got 39 with 16 by himself. And then Dalton Hose is in there now. He's got his numbers up now. He's got 23 with 9. And, of course, you look, too, at uh, Jack Kenny, and Kenny has come through with 22 of them overall tackles, and uh, he's had 10 solos as well. But that's just a few of the guys that are seem to be constantly in on things, and you got to be happy in the way that's spread around, too, so you know that you know whatever areas guys are going, these people are getting the job done. Oh, they all are. They're all doing a real nice job, and, uh, and including Joe, uh, Joe Maurer. Yeah, another guy. Yeah, he's done a nice done job. A nice job getting into the backfield making some plays. And, and Greg Lichtenstein has done a real nice yeah. job. He had an excellent game against Abington. He had about 11 tackles and an interception. And, um, you know, he was uh, he's a guy at the round table this, this week, and, uh, you know, he's he's coming along. But as far as Kenny goes, he's a two-year starter. And he's, yeah. just a, he's just a steady force on the D-line force. You know, he's a kid who... Uh, you know, always seems to do the right thing out there for you. He's one of those guys who's really easy to coach. Right. Uh, you know, he seems to always be doing the right thing. All right. We're going to be back some more, and we'll uh, wrap things up for you in just a little while. Coming up here on the Galen Snyder Show, right after these messages. Landoffy's Deli in Yardley at 90 West Afton Avenue in the Yardleyville Square. This beautiful new eat-in deli and restaurant is open seven days from 8 a.m. serving breakfast, eggs, omelet, breakfast sandwiches, even breakfast burritos. And of course, Landoffy's famous hoagie specialty sandwiches, panini sandwiches, and fresh deli wraps. Landoffy's Deli at 90 West Afton Avenue open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call 215-3. 321-4590. Hi, this is Merrill Reese, and since 1986, McCaffrey Supermarket has been a real supermarket experience and a very proud member of our community. Through good times and bad times, Jim McCaffrey and his family have been there to assist our neighbors when they needed help, whether it's helping flood victims, 
raising funds for the American Cancer Society, or supporting the local Little League teams, you can count on McCaffrey's to be there. McCaffrey Supermarkets, 635 Heacock Road in Yardley in the village of Newtown at 2890 South Eagle Road and also in Princeton and West Windsor. The Pensbury Football Parents Club reminds you to come out and support the Falcons. They'll be selling Pensbury Football merchandise at every home game. And if you can't make it out to the game, remember you can listen to it live on 1490 AM WBCB or watch the Falcons video stream live every game at WBCB1490.com. Well, Coach, we're heading into the uh, second half of the season as uh, five games are in the books, and I always say it at this time, I don't know where they went. And uh, they go so fast in football, and when you love the game, you hate to see only 10. But of course, you can't expect, well, maybe we'd be lucky to see a lot more than 10. That's, that's the hopeful view for all these teams that are in this area, and of course with your ball club as well. But when, when you look at it right now, let, let's take a look at where you stand with five games to go. We know you've got Ben Salem here coming up shortly on a Thursday night, a short week. Uh, but at the same time, you've got some real tough games ahead. You've got the likes of uh, Southerton, you've got the likes of Central Bucks South, and you've got Penridge, and You've got North Penn. North Penn, Southerton, of course, you were beaten, and, and they were not up to par to what they have been. Their coach told me they're young, they're inexperienced. He expects, expects them to be a lot better next year, which I think they probably will. But now you got the other big three you got to contend with. So, really, the second half of this season really looks on paper like the tough part. You got Neshaminy, as you know, always a tough game because of the rivalry at the end of the year. So, this becomes really a, a really tough part of the schedule for you. Oh yeah, no doubt coming up. It's, uh, you know, the league is tough. I mean, some of these teams that we're going to be playing here at the end of the season, you know, in the last four weeks, are actually also some of the best teams in the district. Right. So, you know, that's that's a little different situation. You know, uh, and it, so it'll be a challenge if we can get through these four weeks. Uh, that puts us in a great position going into the district playoffs. You know, when you take a look too, and. and you know, I look at those games, and of course, the, some of these teams still have to play one another, including, of course, coming up, you've got this weekend, you've you got the likes of uh, Abington Penn Ridge is one of those games where it should be a tough ball game. you got Central Bucks South going get against the, uh, the Chamonix Ball Club in there. So the biggest thing, and it was mentioned, of course, I think by all the coaches before uh, the realignment even got underway, is the fact that some of those what would be really tough teams that have done well when they crossed over to the other ball clubs that say in the Continental Conference so far this year. But uh, a couple of them are, are going to be left out of the playoffs because of the fact that they beat each other. Sure, sure. That's definitely going to happen. And uh, you're only going to see two to three teams probably from our league make it. And there's probably two to three teams beyond that that are good enough or as good as teams that are going to make it. Right. But, but they're just not going to have that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, so that, it's going to be interesting from here on out. And like we said, this one a little short week for Pensbury. But one of the things we'll say for you, Coach, is even though you have a short week this week, uh, it came up against Ben Salem, but at least you got an opportunity to, to give the kids a little extra rest, you might say, a little breathing room before they, they head into their next ball game and, and head into this stretch. Yeah, but we got to take business, take care of business against Ben Salem. And then after that, like I said, we're going to shut things down for about three days, rest up, and come back real strong the following week to get ready for home. Okay, and I'll tell you what, and as I said, you, you can look at the scores, you can do whatever you want with those and see what happens. I remember this was years, going years back, when Pensbury was over at Ben Salem, I couldn't make it that night, I had another commitment, and it turned out that no one thought, at the end of the game, people were coming up where I was and saying, oh, what, what do you think of that game tonight between Pensbury and Ben Salem? And this is a few years ago as coach. And went over there, everybody thought Pensbury was going to be a winner, and Ben Salmon came out the winner that night. So you just never know. I might actually have been playing in that game. You remember, you know, the team was looking real good, and Ben Salmon looked like, was, in fact, uh, when they came and told me the score, yeah. I, I thought somebody was kidding me. Well, it was, it, was, uh, it was 1984, and I was a junior, and we went up there second to last game, and we were looking beyond them, and we played... Uh, we knew we had the Chamonix for the league title the next week up in the Chamonix, and uh, we just didn't play with them. And they beat us nine to nothing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they had a fullback linebacker, which was pretty good, Nick Brian Johnson, went on the wing forest. And uh, we had trouble stopping them that night, and uh, they stopped us. And uh, so the following week, we got ourselves back on track, and we ended up beating uh, 
Dick Bettis is the Shanley team, 12-0 uh, for the uh, league title. But I remember the game well. That, that, that I can recall. So you never know what's going to happen. Get ready for this one tonight. And thank you for joining us here in the, every week, of course, with the Galen Snyder Show. And brought to you by Aria Health, your neighbors and friends here in Bucks County, there to help you when you need them. We're getting set to go out to the field, get set for our ball game tonight. Pensbury will be home as the Falcons play host to the Owls of Ben Salem. I'm Vince Reed. Good night, everybody.